Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Friday to you. Just left my yoga class and I wanted to, it was on my heart all week since I watched that series, The Pharmacist. I don't know if anybody's watched that pharmacist. Let me know in the comments below. Drop a one if you watch The Pharmacist. I'd love to know your thoughts about it and if it was eye awakening for you or not. But I mean, it hits so close to home. It's the biggest reason. It's the biggest why, I guess, why I've looked into other things to help other people because I have seen over the last 15 years um, of working in physical therapy, people getting stuck in the cycle of opioids and surgeries. And this is exactly what this documentary is about. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's called The Pharmacist. Check it out. It's on Netflix right now. Um, and as you're coming in, just say hi, wave, let me know you're there. Let me know where you're coming in from. Uh, give me some likes and hearts and let me know that you have seen this or if this um, hits with you. But I want to talk a little bit about my own personal experience with um, being on pain medication. And this was about nine years ago, and nine, ten years ago, I don't remember exactly, but um, I injured my shoulder and needed a shoulder surgery to repair my labrum. All I did was pick up a bicycle. If that's not a sign of old age, I don't know what is. I picked up a bicycle and I tore my shoulder. Uh, the end result was, you know, physical therapy. I had, I was off of work for almost six months. Um, I was in therapy for about four months. And you know, if you come, when you first come out of any orthopedic surgery, they tell you as soon as you start feeling, because they give you a nerve block, right? So they they deaden whatever extremity is that it is that they're gonna do surgery on, they deaden it. And then as soon as you start to feel your fingers, feel your toes, whatever it is, they say, take your pain medication. They scare the daylights out of you that you're going to be in ridiculous pain after surgery, right? So as soon as you start to feel those fingers, take your pain medication. Now I was giving specifically a hydrocodone and Valium the volume to balance out what the hydrocodone was going to do. The hydrocodone, all it does, it is a opioid just like Norco, just like any other pain medication out there. It's an opioid, right? So um, the opioid, it just numbs you. It doesn't take away your pain. Um, the volume is supposed to be a relaxer. It's supposed to bring you down, right? Um, and the combination of the two, it says right on there when you take it, could cause paranoia, could cause depression, could might cause X, Y, Z things, you know, all the wonderful things that comes with a lot of medication. So I took these opioids for four months and um, I was in so much pain all throughout this experience, all after my surgery, and it seemed like uh, when I didn't take the medication, obviously it seemed like my pain was a lot more, but now knowing what I know, I feel like the pain I was experiencing was more so a pain of not taking the medication. It was painful not to take the medication. I cried. I cried daily for four months daily for no reason. I cried during my therapy sessions. I cried when I went home. I cried in the morning. I cried until I took my pain medication. And then once it seemed like when I took my pain medication, I, I didn't cry as much and I felt a little bit better. But really what was going on there was I felt better that I got the drug in my system. My arm didn't feel any better. My shoulder was still throbbing. I still had terrible bicep pain. I could, it was so incredibly weak. I tried to return to work after four months and I couldn't get back. I had to go off for another month. And really, it was the most depressing time in my life. I was so depressed during that time. And you know, people get stuck in this cycle. And this is what, um, again, with the series in, on Netflix, The Pharmacist, he kind of goes into this and um, how the whole opioid thing started, the crisis that we see now of pill mills popping up everywhere, doctors prescribing pain medication left and right, and people going and seeking and only being able to get those opioids from those specific doctors who are willing to give them out. You know, now a lot of the, you know, um, towards the end of the series, it was just in recent news how Purdue Medical has been shut down, right? They've all been trying to be taken to jail. Everybody is being indicted. Doctors are 
in prison because of what has happened with the opioids and the opioid crisis and not uh, operating ethically. You know, first rule, do no harm. These doctors, these pharmaceutical companies know what harm comes from these opioids and the, and the medication. So really, I mean, for me, it was an eye-awakening experience just going through it for myself after seeing my patients for years stuck in these horrible cycles, all of them depressed, all of them in pain, and not being able to break free. So um, now in the day and age that we are now with um, legislation and everything freeing the plant, the plant being the cannabis plant, it is now free. It is no longer, we're not in prohibition anymore, just like we were once with alcohol, right? It was prohibited, nobody could sell it, you couldn't grow it, you couldn't buy it, you couldn't make it, and now it is freed. So many people are able to be breaking free of these cycles of being stuck with their opioids. And this is where, when you see me advocating for CBD, this is really near and dear to my heart. Um, not only for my own patients, for my family, for the hope of the future, for others, you know, it is something to now hope for. These people now have hope. CBD, cannabis in general, it has brought hope to people who have not otherwise had hope and are stuck, stuck in cycles. So I want to, um, yeah, again, just say, if you need any help seeking a good source of CBD or you need a doctor who is willing to go that route, please reach out to me. If you know someone that might could benefit, that needs some more information that you need help talking to, I'd be happy to talk to you about how you might potentially be able to help them or talk to them or approach them or get make them more educated so that they know that there are other options that do work that are not going to get them in this cycle, leading them to a slow, painful death, essentially, right? Because so many of those now, that's the crisis that we're in, so many deaths related to opioid use. Um, and now that it's getting harder um, in the medical system to get the pain medication that everybody is addicted to now, people are getting alternative sources, which are exactly the same thing. Um, and again, going back to that Netflix, if you've watched that, man, let me know if you've watched that. A user straight up says, word on the street is, these pills are exactly the same as heroin if you crush them up and shoot them up. The difference of the pill versus heroin itself is it's a slow release versus a instant whatever it is you get from it. So guys, these are... <laughs> Just let me know. Let me know if you need any help. Reach out, please. Uh, you know, if you're seeking any answers, reach out. Heavy for a Friday, but it was on my heart. I really wanted to share it. You guys, I hope you make it a beautiful, wonderful day. Thank you uh, for watching, tuning in. I'll talk to you soon.